Hi guys, my name is Ash, aka Smash, and this is my knitting podcast episode 2. Hi guys, I'm back with a second episode. I'm super excited. I'm really blown away by all the views on my last knitting podcast episode, so thank you so much for all of the friendly comments and the support. I really appreciate it. Especially someone who's starting out new on YouTube, it can be very scary and a lot of the time you feel like, oh, like no one's going to watch this. Um, but I'm really surprised with the amount of people who have seen it. So thank you so much. I just really want to thank you guys. That's really cool. <laughs> um, I know it's been a few weeks since I last uploaded um, an episode, a podcast episode. I think it's been three weeks. Um, I... Kind of because I released that like knit and chat and I have been really busy at work. I haven't really had too much time to knit, but I feel like I have done enough progress to be able to show you guys what I'm doing. Um, that like actually show you guys something. So it's not like I'm, I haven't really done anything. I do have stuff to show you guys. So that'll be good. But I don't know if this will be a super long episode. I'm not too sure. I'm sure when I start rambling, it'll end up being long enough. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, so we'll start off with my sock. So on my last podcast, I talked about the Sweet Woodruff sock. Um, I was knitting it in this lovely green yarn here. Uh, this is the uh, Chasky by Amano Yarns. It's like a linen um, cotton wool blend. And I bought it from Lumen Spindle, which is my local yarn store. I've gotten pretty far, I would say. Like, I think last time I saw you guys, I had about, like, this much done. Maybe even less. Maybe even just, like, this little bit. Now I've got, like, the whole leg length and the heel. Um, in this pattern, it is, it's got, like, um one by one ribbing on the cuff and then it has these little kind of zigzag patterns that you create by doing uh, either knit two together or what's the other one knit two together or slip slip knit and that kind of determines the direction in which the zigzags in and then in between those you've got all these little little eyelets and you just do yarn overs for those. And then you've got the cable in the middle. <laughs> uh, and then I've, I'm doing just one of those like short row heels. I don't know the exact name for this type of heel. But I really like it because it provides a little bit of extra support. And I find that it's a bit more comfy. Less friction. And it's, it's very easy to do. Um, for me. Because that's the first type of heel I learned how to do. So I find it quite easy and like quite natural to do. This I haven't really picked up, to be honest, in a week, like over, probably over a week. Gosh, I feel like after I filmed my podcast episode, I was really motivated to get it done. And then I just got really busy at work, really busy with things on the weekend and I just haven't picked it up. So I haven't really gotten very far. I did order another one and receive, order and receive another one of the needles, which this is a nine inch circular needle. It's a Chiagu uh, 2.5 millimeter. The reason why I ordered another one was because I know some people, like a few people in my like little, little knitting group, they knit on magic, they look like knit socks on magic loop. And so they can knit two socks at a time. And I love that idea, but I just don't like doing magic loops so my idea was that if I get another one of these needles I can kind of knit back and forth on e either of them I'm not going to be like oh knit one row and then change to the other sock and knit one row it'll be more be like oh I'll knit the cuff on this one then I'll knit the cuff on the other one and I'll knit the leg section then I'll knit the leg section on the other one so that I can kind of prevent myself from getting so like second sock syndrome because I do have a lot of just one-off socks that I can't be bothered knitting the other one because I felt like that one took me so long so I'm kind of trying to to tackle that and um and uh try and attempt doing kind of like simulate the magic loop but on two separate needles so I don't have to fiddle around with like pulling through 
the um the cable how about something nothing against people who love using the magic loop method like go off um that's fine i just prefer using nine inch circulars and i know there's people out there who hate nine inch circulars because they feel like it cramps their hands i think i'm used to it it doesn't really cramp my hands um i'm very much used to using these types of needles but again it's what i uh what i'm used to and <laughs> if anyone's wondering <laughs> These gorgeous little point protectors, these are little tulips, they're from the brand Tulip, they're a Japanese uh, company, and they are just the cutest thing in the world, especially paired with this green sock, I, oh, I die at the cuteness, it's so freaking good, I love it, <laughs> these are also from Lumen Spindle, um, I don't know where else sells them, like the only place in Australia I've been able to find them is Lumen Spindle, so they have an online store, um, but I have them and they come in so many different colors, but they're literally the freaking cutest thing in the world And they just make me feel like I'm knitting with little flowers when I put them on. They're so sweet So I love that. So that's my first work in progress that I I feel like I'll get there I can't wait for these to be finished because they are really nice and I just bought some new Birkenstocks that actually fit my feet because I stole my last two pair of Birkenstock with my mum and she has size seven feet and I have eight and a half to nine size feet. So I really want, like they won't fit socks in them and I want to be like a dad and I want to wear my socks and sandals. And so that's kind of my idea. I got some new Birkenstocks so I can wear on my shelf on my socks. So um, I'm excited because these will look really good because the Birkenstocks are gray. So next. <clears throat> The next thing I have to show you is not that exciting. It is, um, what's it called? The Hipster Hat by Petite Knit. And so this is what I've done so far. It's a tube. You know, it's not going to be the most exciting thing because it's literally a tube. I've just up to the part where I'm meant to be decreasing. Um, I'm loving it so far. Like, I love the color. Like, it really is showing up quite true. It's like very orange. It's two by two rib. And it's knit on three and a half millimeter circular needles. And then you use DPNs to decrease. And I did a tubular cast on. This is my first time doing a tubular cast on. And I think it looks pretty good. If I say so myself. And yeah, this is fine. Now, it was really easy to knit up the actual kind of hat part. Because this will eventually be folded over. Like, oh, hang on, I'm just going to fold it over because I just think it looks, I think it looks so cute. Um, it wasn't hard to actually knit up, but I haven't touched it in again over a week. Because I'm up to the part where I have to decrease. And usually that's not too bad. Like, the point of needles are kind of a drag. But the reason why I don't want to do this is because it's it, it requires me to do like some sort of, I don't know, pearl two together through the back loop and that just already is just it seems too hard so I just kind of I'm like mm, really procrastinating doing this even though it's so gorgeous even though I love it so much um I just I can't be bothered another thing is like I'm chronically all the beanies I've made have been too small for my head not circumference wise but like length wise I feel like they end up being those like hipster hats that you saw in like the early like 2000 and like 2014, 15, where they're just like the ones that don't even like touch the top of your ears. I feel like I have a really bad issue of making them too small, uh, but this seemed really long and kind of like coney. And I know people like that look, the, the cone, but it's not, not for me. So I'm hoping that this works out to be a good size because I did, I have knitted about four, ooh, maybe three centimeters shorter your course like it says that this should measure 24 centimeters i've knit it to like 22 or 23 um or maybe even less maybe more 22 but i'll try it on for you even though there's like no head but it, it's it's like i love the color oh my god there's like a string in the way but i'm loving the color and i think it's so cute oh, it's a bit tight Ugh. But can we like kind of simulate what it's going to look like? Or is it going to look really weird? Ugh. So much hair. Oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. Is it very fisherman-y? Am I a fisherman? 
I kind of love it. I kind of love the color. I love it. And I really want to make a pair of fingerless gloves to match it. There is a pair of fingerless gloves that matches the 2x2 two two ribbing and they actually knit it in the exact same colour so I'm, it's so easy for me to visualise that they're going to work together. Um, I'll link that in the description down below as well if anyone else is interested if they want to make a matching pair of fingerless gloves. But I think it's really cute. I love the colour. It's so bright and I feel like we're in winter at the moment in Australia and I feel... Like a lot of the winter, I just see like black, a lot of black dark colors. And that's fine. Like that's winter, right? But I just love a pop of color in winter. I love on a sunny day. Currently it's sunny outside, which is why I'm like looking, like I haven't got any makeup on because I'm like, oh my God, there's sun. I need to film um, before the sun disappears because it gets dark at like 5.30 here uh, in the winter. So I really like it. I think it's really fun. It's so bright and I love it so much. And maybe looking at it is going to motivate me to make to actually finish this because I actually do want to wear it. And I think it'll be all right. I think, does that look good? <laughs> does that look nice? Um, I think it'll be all right. I don't think it'll be too small. I think that'll be good. So that's that one. So that's that and that's coming along good. But again, like these are things like, that's a project that's not going to take very long to finish. Like it'll probably take me, what, like a night, maybe like, maybe like a day, but I just like put it off because I, like it just seems like it's gonna be a bit tedious and so I don't wanna do it. Mm. Which is so stupid, so silly. Silly. Um, the next one I'm super excited for because I just cast this on today. This is the start. <laughs> this is the start of the slip Oh, the Friday Slip Over by Petite Knit. And I'm knitting this. Oh, I didn't say what I was knitting this in. Goof. This is knit in Satin is Gone Double Sunday in the colour That Orange Feeling. Everything will be linked down below. Um, and I'll show you the patterns on the screen over this way. Yeah, over here. Um, I've really got to get used to this. That's the second episode and I'm already done goofing up but it's all right we'll learn we live and we learn so this is the beginning of the friday slipover by petite knit it's i'm knitting it with 3.5 millimeter circular needles um you knit flat for the like to the back and the front and then you join them in the round the pattern calls for four millimeters but when i knit my swatch he my swatch um my gauge was off um my row gauge was good which was rare um but my stitch count was off by two stitches so i had two less stitches so i was knitting my knitting was too loose uh it looks really good it's broken fisherman's what the hell broken fisherman's it's broken rib stitch which is just one row so on the right side row you knit um, and then on the wrong side row you knit one pearl one and it looks it creates this kind of like yeah broken rib pattern Ooh, broken rib pattern um it, this is what it looks like with the three millimeter before blocking and I love it I feel like when I knit it with the ooh, <laughs> when I knit it with the four millimeter it kind of looked too holy like it looked almost see-through um, so when my gauge was off, I just sized down like half a needle size and that feels a lot more dense and it feels more like a kind of the vest texture that I'm looking for. Um, yeah, like I said before, you just like, you knit the back, you knit the front and then you join them in the round, knit the body and then you do the sleeves and then the collar. It's got a folded collar. But I don't know if I'm going to do that. The modifications that I'm thinking is that I will be doing it more cropped than Petite has it in her pattern in the sample photos. Um, and I'm going to do like a split hem where the ribbing starts so that it kind of cinches a bit more in at the waist. She looks really good at it, but because I'm a bit more, 
I've got more bust. I don't want it to look too boxy. So my plan is to do the split hem to kind of make it go in a bit. Um, and then uh, depending on how much yarn I have, because I am working with like, I think I have 900 meters, but the pattern calls for 940 meters in my size. Um, depending on how much yarn I have left, depends if I'll do the folded collar. If I don't have enough, I'm just going to do a normal one by one rib collar. I'm not going to bother with the folding over. It's not the end of the world because on the, on the actual, um, vest sleeve arm hole part, it's only one by one. There's no fold. So it won't look too out of place if I decide not to do the folded collar. I would like to do it because I've never done it before. It'd be nice to try, but, uh, it really just depends on how much yarn. I bought this yarn like at a craft afternoon with the yarn is called, um, which I should probably tell you what the yarn is before I start talking about it. This is, um, DK, um, yeah, DK knit by, uh, Woolen Works in the color San Fran Flowers and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's this amazing, really bright, bubblegum hot neon pink beautiful i love it um but i did buy it definitely it was an impulse purse per impulse purchase and i've only bought four skeins of it <laughs> so i didn't have enough to make a sweater so the vest is what i'm making and i really didn't want just a plain stockinette stitch because i was kind of really bored of knitting stockinette um, from my cardigan, my novice cardigan, which you'll see next year. Um, so I wanted something a bit more textural, a bit more interesting. So that's why I chose the Friday slipover because it had that broken rib stitch, which is a bit more engaging to knit. And it looks it's just a bit more interesting, you know, not just a bit more interesting. It's very squishy. I really love it. It's super soft when blocked. This yarn is really lovely. I really love it when it's blocked. Um, Superwash tends to be really nice and soft, but it also tends to grow a lot. Before I made this swatch, I measured my gauge and I was like, on gauge. I was perfect. And then I blocked it and it and it grew. <laughs> I was really hoping it wouldn't. And that was kind of like my naivete. Like, I knew it was going to grow, but I was really hoping it wouldn't. Ah, so lovey. But yeah, I'm super excited. I did this today at the yarn store. Um, I'm really excited for this to... To be a full-fledged vest. I plan on wearing it with dresses, with shirts, like a really nice pale pink shirt underneath this I think will look really really good. I'm really loving pink. Like I know pink is very like in the moment at the moment because of the Barbie movie but this was I've always just been really attracted to bright colors, bright oranges, bright pinks. Just uh, I love all those colors so oh my god I'm just realizing that I've got that my like <laughs> that there's a reflection of orange on me give me two seconds and i'll fix that sorry guys i know there was like a red stripe across my face for like a good solid moment of that but i didn't notice that the sun was reflecting off my car and like going directly into my eyes so i'm very sorry <laughs> if that was really distracting there's not much I can do about it now. I've already filmed that part. And I really don't feel like refilming this because I don't think I have enough sunlight to refilm this. So if it bothers you, I'm really sorry. Just maybe don't. Just look away. Just look away. Just look away. Anyway, talking about swatches, actually, I also knit up a swatch of the Rosario uh, for TEC in this beautiful pink color. Um, I was originally going to make the Maristia cardigan out of this but I ended up pivoting because online I saw this really gorgeous um, drop sleeve sweater in pink and I desperately was like, oh, I really want one. But does anyone else feel like that when they see a sweater um, and <laughs> like a knit, knit or any knitwear online that if they bought it, they'd be cheating on their knitting? Because that's what I feel like. I feel like I'm cheating on my knitting if I, if I buy a sweater <laughs> because I know I can make it. And it wasn't a cheap sweater either. So in terms of like it wouldn't, it's not necessarily going to be like cheaper if I buy it pre-made from a company. Like it's actually probably going to be the same price or cheaper to make it myself. So, um, but yeah, I feel like always feel guilty when I look at knitwear. Like I'm like doing something dodgy and my, my existing knitwear is going to find out and I'm going to get in trouble. 
maybe just me. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so I knit up a swatch because I was really keen to see what it looked like and see if my gauge, my gauge is off in this one too. I definitely have to go down a needle size again. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just, I must be a loose knitter, but I feel like I'm not. I feel like I'm, I'm just a very average knitter, but I don't know. Maybe just the yarn grows a lot. This is not super wash yarn, but it is like you can wash it. It has the same kind of mm, care instructions as super wash, which makes me think that it's like being treated like super wash. And maybe that's why it grew so much after I blocked it. It's not as soft as the woolen work, but um, I definitely think it's going to be really nice to knit with. Alrighty, the next one is a big one. I'm so excited to show you because I've made so much progress. Last time I saw you, I didn't have any sleeves. I didn't have anything, but this, ah! <laughs> this is my Novice Cardigan by Petite Knit. I am, oh my God, guys. I'm so far, look how much I've done. Let me see if I can sh show you properly. Oh my God, okay. Let me see if I can show you this properly. Uh, all right. Maybe this one. This one. All right. Here we go. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we nearly, nearly lost her there. So this is what I've got so far. So I finished the body, the actual stockinette part of the body. I've done the ribbing on the bottom. That's just one by one ribbing. I wonder if that shows it very well. I've done one by one ribbing. I have done the sleeves and I am obsessed with these sleeves. So you just knit the sleeves. You don't decrease it anywhere along the sleeves except for when you get to the cuff. And when I tell you I'm obsessed with these puffy sleeves, these like balloon bishop sleeves, I think they call them. I am obsessed. Like, look how cute that is. Look how absolutely adorable that little cuff is oh my god it's the cutest thing I've ever seen I'm I'm in love I'm in love with this oh I'm so in love and it's so soft um it's lovely I originally did the sleeves I originally did the sleeves and cast off with just like a generic kind of stretchy cast off but it left this really kind of big bulgy inconsistent edge so I decided to do a, sign, uh, a sewn bind off it's like an invisible rib bind off and I think that looks way better I think that looks way cleaner because it matches the ribbing and it is stretchy like there's quite a lot of stretch you can see right there there's like quite a lot of stretch but it matches and it looks really really good I wish I had have done like a similar like cast on but I just did a long tail cast on for the for the one by one ribbing on the collar. Um, I also decided to do a sewn off, sewn bind off for the bottom as well. Um, oh God, when I tell you that this was the longest, most boring thing I have ever done when I the sewn off bind off on the boring on the bottom. Oh my god, I had no motivation. This stripped all motivation to do anything, any knitting. Like, I'm pretty sure I hadn't touched my other projects because I had to do... Oh, mind the ding. Sorry. Because, like, I'm pretty sure that the reason why I haven't touched any of my other projects was because I was stuck doing this bind off and that I knew that if I wasn't going to do the bind off, I couldn't be knitting on my other projects because... I knew that this had to be done. So I was really procrastinating and like in combination with work being busy, me being tired, I just not want to sit there and do a, a sewn off bind off. Like I really didn't. I'm so grateful that I've done it now and it looks so good. Like I'm, I'm, I love the look of it, but that was a slog and a half. Christ. I, and that's the annoying thing that it looks so good. So I know that I'm going to want to do it in the future. I know that in future garments, I'm going to do it again. And I, and I think knowing that it takes so long is so off-putting. It makes me not want to get to that part. But it looks so good. It just looks so clean. It just matches the ribbing. It's very nice. So the only thing I have to do now is cast on for the button band. So that's the only thing I have left. 
is the button bam. Now I've watched a few tutorials on how to pick up stitches for the button bang because I've never done it before and read a few things on the internet and they say to block your cardigan before picking up stitches so that's what I've got to do. I've got to, um, and I've got to do some knitting math so that should be fun but then it's done then I get then I get to go button shopping and I get to pick out some fun buttons. I really want to do I found these really cute like floral buttons that are like the same kind of orangey brown that are as what's in the cardigan so I'm hoping that I can order those and they're from Australia and they'll, they'll come in time and I can I can on the next podcast episode wear this it's I'm so excited this is the most expensive and the most time consuming thing I've ever made but I'm in love with it and I'm really hoping that I don't stuff up the button band but I guess that's the good thing about the button band you can just undo it and you're not actually like ruining the structural integrity of the actual garment so that's pretty good so I'm very very excited I'm very excited oh my god my arm's hurting <laughs> it's heavy it's a big one it's a big girl but um yes I'm in love I'm in love and the combination of yarn is really good too like like I said I'm knitting in my last podcast I am knitting this in the Rosarius for Marion and held together with the Gepard Kid Setter, which is a mohair kid silk, and the combination of the two just is so soft. I'm really loving it. So, yes, that's that. Ooh. Okay, what do we got next? Now, I think, oh, yeah, I got some yarn. I got some yarn, that's right. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. This, this, oh my god. Is so exciting. I had seen, I think, Knit by Mandy. Um, I saw her post on her Instagram or I saw it on like YouTube or something, her talking about um, this creative make it tweed. And so what this is, is like kind of like a lace weight um, yarn that has all of these kind of tweed-ish speckly bits in it. And you hold it together with like um another uh like another yarn and it makes whatever you're knitting um into a tweed and I thought this was really cool and I really like it because it's a very colorful tweed um I I like lots of color uh and I really wanted and I really want a gray cardigan but I want it to be not just a plain gray cardigan I want it to be a bit more fun so when I saw that the yarn bowl in Queensland was stocking this on their website I snatched that up so quickly like so freaking quickly I bought five of these so that I could have enough to um like knit anything that I want a sweater a cardigan anything because there's about 445 meters per 50 grams and the bowl is 50 grams so I have five of those so I've over 2,000 meters in this to make whatever I want and you might think actually 2,000 meters that's crazy that's enough to make like two sweaters not not for me not with this bus size <laughs> like one thing that I feel like not a lot of people talk about or that I don't hear a lot of people talk about is you know accessibility when it comes to being a plus size person in the knitting community and getting a sweater's quantity worth of yarn doesn't come cheap like if you want wool and you want like really nice hand dyed stuff or even just like things like mohair or, or like that higher kind of like high to medium price you need a lot of yarn for a lot of these projects especially if there's things like double cuffs and stuff like that that's a lot of yarn and it's expensive so this was actually relative like this was pretty cheap to get a sweater quantities worth of this um only five balls for over 2,000 meters like that's really good when you compare like a lace like mohair um that's you know you're looking at around $18 and you're getting probably around 200 to 250 meters so it's actually a pretty good value to be able to combine that with you know whatever yarn you want and it's it I've knit up I haven't knit too many swatches I've got to block some swatches with it but it's quite soft like it's not soft like you would a wool but it's not scratchy so I feel like if you don't like tweeds because they tend to be a bit more rustic or 
<clears throat> tend to be a bit more scratchy. I feel like this is a good alternative because it's not scratchy at all. It's just really, really nice. So that's my yarn. That's one of my yarn acquisitions. I, oh, actually, I do have some more. What are I talking about? I really threw this together last minute because you probably can tell the sun is going down. So <laughs> I really wanted to get this in in time. I'll be right back. I'm just going to grab some more yarn because I did buy more. Alrighty. So we're back. I do have more yarn. I'm very excited. I totally forgot about this, which is not good. I probably should remember. I really, I saw that Andrea Maori released a cowl called the Rad Plaid Cowl, and I loved the kind of, um, like, yeah, plaid that she had going on. And I saw that La Bien Ami, um, had like swatches and bundles uh, to make that cow and one of the bundles they had was kind of like this creamy gray peachy pink combination and I thought it was just absolutely gorgeous like I I saw that swatch it wasn't even like the whole cow it was just the swatch of the cow they posted on the Instagram and I instantly was like I need to make that in those colors so I went onto their website to buy the bundle and it's not cheap not cheap at all it's a pretty penny and then I was like, but that's okay. Like it's, it'll be a really nice piece in my wardrobe. It'll be really lovely. It'll be really special. You know, I was like, it's okay. I'll, you know, think about it. I'll fork out the money and just for like shits and gig, I decided to put it in my cart to see how much it would be to shipping to Australia. It's coming from France. <laughs> when I, when I saw the shipping cost, so in my last podcast episode, I talked about how I really want to try knitting for Olive, but I'm worried, be like, I'm not that, like, keen yet because I have to pay a lot for shipping. The shipping on that was 17 euros, which works out to be, I don't know, like, $30 Australian. So it's, it's, it's a good percentage of the actual, how much the value of the yarn would be. When I went to check out and I saw the shipping from France for three skeins of yarn was 38 euros I almost had a heart attack I was gagged I could not believe 38 euros it's like a, it's like 38 euros not even half a kilo like not even it's like oh my god it was fingering weight so I think at the most it would be with like a mohair alpaca thing so I feel like at the most it would have been mm, 250 grams like 2.25 of a kilo and they wanted to charge me 38 euros so in australian that would be like something like at least 60 dollars 60 dollars on top of the like 100 dollar 100 euros it would already cost me for the yarn i almost had a heart attack i just ruled that out of my mind i was just like okay that's it I'm like I cannot afford that there is a place like in the city that sells uh La Bien Amy but they didn't have any of the colors that to do with that cow so in that bundle so I was like I'm just gonna have to make this up myself so I was lucky enough to be invited by um, my family friend to go to um, Little Woolly Makes, which is a yarn store in Hastings, which is like further down, like a bit far out, like an hour-ish away from Melbourne. Um, and so I had it down there and I happened to kind of find the perfect combination for making this cow. So I let's start off, I got this Woolen Works. Now this is Neon Lights. I have you oh actually yeah actually in my last podcast you would have seen I made a um the Sophie shawl out of the DK version of this this is the fingering version it is um 80% extra fine Australian superwash it's 20% nylon uh and 80% merino yeah and so this and then I'm going to combine it with um I don't know if this is Jing Jing fiber. Oh my god, I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I'm I really should have googled it before I started with this. And this is this beautiful kind of peachy pink color. It has like it has like pink and peach in it. And 
it's just oh my god it's so fluffy it's mohair oh. it's yeah mohair silk it is called shrimp the colorway shrimp which it is shrimpy it's very shrimpy and then I'm going to pair it with this Peyton's Baby Dreamtime Merino 4 ply mm, the color 2941 and this it was really hard to find honestly I pretty much found these straight away I pretty much found these and was like oh my god that's perfect that's exactly the color they have like the neon creamy color they have the peachy pink in there but this color the grayish color that's like not a full gray but kind of a pinky gray that was hard to find because I didn't need a cream I wanted a cool tone pinky gray how do you find that this is coming up really beige on the on the camera but it is a little bit more gray in person um and this is a full ply as well so these three together oh my god this is really hard to hold them all together but these three together I think are gonna look really great as the red pleb cow I'm very excited for that this isn't something that I'm probably gonna cast on soon it might be something that I cast on later because I do have a lot of projects in the works but I am very excited to try and replicate this um the red pleb cow because I love those colors so especially these what a mix what a combo so I'm very very excited for that so that's all for my yarn acquisitions. I think that's all for my whips. I don't have any completed projects. I'm so sorry. I have been really lazy. I have no excuses. I've been tired. I've been lazy. I'm so sorry. I'm hoping next time though I'll have lots of finished projects to show you. Hopefully there'll be lots of FOs. And probably some new whips. I'm like a whip addict. I, you know, every time I buy something new, I have to like knit up a swatch or start something because I love it so much. Tell me, like, if you guys enjoy, like, um, you know, what you guys enjoy from a knitting podcast. Like, what do you like to hear? I'm still learning, so I do sometimes forget to mention things like needle sizes and stuff like that. So. Um, I will have all that information listed in the description box below and I'll have most of the patterns like up on the side um, and like some information wherever you know I'm just playing around with everything um, but yeah let me guys let me know what you guys kind of like and get out of a knitting podcast um, I think I will end up doing like more knitting podcasts of course but yeah maybe a few more videos about you know more specific things I do want to talk about things like uh, knitting inclusivity in the knitting community when it comes to plus sizes because as a plus size person that really does uh, interest me because it's just interesting hearing from other people's perspectives um, so that might be something that I make in the future I'm very excited to kind of start this journey and I was really really grateful for the lovely feedback and all of the um, yeah all of the the comments and everything on on my last knitting podcast so i really appreciate it and i'm really grateful so thanks so much guys i really appreciate it <laughs> bye